Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm going to show you 10 Google Docs editing features that everyone should know how to use. Let's go ahead and get started here. And the first thing we're going to do is go into our tools menu and check the preferences and set up Smart Compose. Smart Compose is that neat little feature that allows you to start typing and Google Docs will try to predict what you're going to write next. If it predicts it correctly, just hit your tab key to fill in the rest of the sentence. It's a time saver that I absolutely love. I also have automatically capitalized words turned on and automatically detect links and quotes. Nice little time savers you can turn on there in your preferences. And while you're here, you can also check out substitutions where you can specify things that you want to have replaced. For example here, if you want that copyright icon to appear, you can do so by just typing a C in parentheses and it gets replaced with the copyright icon. You see the same thing for fractions and for a trademark, but you can set up anything to be replaced by anything else. For example, if I wanted to have a TM automatically, automatically replaced with something like, like say, at the moment. And so if I type in ATM, it automatically will then fill in at the moment. Now, that's obviously not going to be a very handy thing for me all the time. So I can go back into my preferences and I can turn off those substitutions as well or remove that substitution entirely. Now, the next thing we're going to take a look at is voice typing. And this is a handy tool for anyone who can speak faster than they can type. So how do we access that? Well, once again, we're going to go up there to our tools menu and select voice typing. And now just click to speak. This is a demonstration of using voice typing, period. New line. This is another demonstration of using voice typing, period. And you can see there, I just have to state if I want to have a new line or state any punctuation that I want to use. When I'm done with voice typing, I can just turn that off by clicking on the little X next to that speaker or that microphone icon. Now, Let's take a look at the personal dictionary that you can set up in your Google Documents account. Now, this is very helpful if you have a last name that Google often thinks is incorrectly spelled. For example, my last name, B-Y-R-N-E, Google sometimes thinks is incorrect. So let's go back up here and we're going to set our spelling and grammar with a personal dictionary. And I'll type in B-Y-R-N-E. Click OK. And now Google will not try to suggest that my last name is spelled incorrectly. Helpful for names or any other words that Google might not quite understand the meaning of, but are actually correct when you type them. Now let's take a look at how we can set up our pages. This is one that people ask me about all the time. Let's take a look at how we can format our pages. So we're going to go to File, and let's look at Page Setup. And here we can apply to the whole document or just to one part of the document. The Landscape Setting. We can change the paper size if we want. We can even change the page color. And I can have a yellow background for my page. Now that's really hard on the eyes. So let's go back and let's change that again. Let's change our page setup and go back and make that a standard white page. And I'm going to put it back into portrait mode. But while I'm here, I also want to point out that you can set custom margins for your document. Now let's click OK, and we're back to the default look. Next, let's take a look at using headers and footers 
in our Google document. So to use headers and footers in our Google documents, let's go to insert and we can now insert a header. And of course, we can also insert a footer right down below there. Now, while I'm here, I'll also point out that you can insert page numbers and choose the position of those page numbers. Let's turn those on right there. So now I have page number one set up. Next, let's take a look at this text that I have on the screen. Well, I want to change the spacing. And to change the spacing, we can use these standard options, or we can use custom spacing. And let's say I want to have it be 2.15 lines, and I'm going to have it applied to that section of the document. So you can have that custom spacing applied to just one section of the document or your entire document. Now, speaking of spacing and organizing the page, let's take a look and see what we can do here using tables. Let's go in here and let's insert our table. And let's say I want to have a little three by three table. And now I have my table right here where I can say, no, want, learn. And I want to bold that. I'm going to bold that one, and I want to bold that one as well. Now, all these things will expand as we write. Say, I want to know more about Google Documents. In fact, I should have put that in the want category. I'll say, I know how to create a Google document. There we go. And so we have that option there for inserting tables that will automatically expand as we write in our Google documents. Next, let's take a look at how to use columns in Google documents. So we want to use columns in our Google document and to do that, we go back up here to that format option and choose columns. And we'll see our default is one column, two columns, or three columns. But we also have our more options. And from there, we can specify two columns with a little spacing in there of, let's say, 1.5 with a line between the columns. Let's apply that now. And we can see there we have our page now arranged in columns. Now, if I don't like that, you know what I can do? Just hit Control Z and it goes back to the single column as it was before. Now, I wanna do a little more writing inside of my grid and, to, and I'm going to write with some special characters. And that's one of the features you should know how to use in Google Docs. Let's go in here and in my insert menu, Let's choose special characters. You'll also see equation is available in there. Let's do some special characters and we can just start using any of these characters by just clicking on them and now inserting them into the document itself. Now we have tons that we can pick from here. We can go in and look at all of these different options, including emojis. If I want to have my eyes and a heart and my hand up and applause and we can insert all of those right into our google documents and last but not least if you wanted to make one google document and then reuse it but slightly personalize it or slightly edit it every time you need to reuse it you might want to use the find and replace function in Google Documents. And let's take a look at how to use that right now. To use the find and replace function, just go up to the 
edit button and select find and replace and let's find the word google and let's replace it with microsoft throughout the document and we're going to match our case and hit replace all and now it says Microsoft Docs instead of Google Docs throughout this document. Of course, if I wanna undo that, just hit Control Z on your keyboard and it sets it back to the way it was before. Now, speaking of setting things back to the way they were before, one last, the 11th, the 11th editing feature that you should know deals with looking at the history of your document. So let's go to File. And from the File menu, let's look at our version history. We can see the version history here. And we can see all the details of previous versions of this Google document. And at any point, if we want to go back, we can say, yes, I like that one. Let's restore this version. Or we can name this version as well. And we can even make a copy of this version. So that's 10, actually 11, Google Docs editing features that everyone should know how to use. As always, for more tips and tricks like this, please check out freetechforteachers.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel.